Hello, Charlie Sink here. I've always liked building my own tools and machinery. I just find it really satisfying and fun. So here's a little disc sander I put together about 30 years ago. Works great. Here's a Variac hot wire power supply for cutting foam wing cores. A rod bender I have in one of my other videos. And some electronics debugging stuff I use when building up electronics. So anyway, when I needed to bend up some small 1 quarter by 1 16th strip brass, I didn't even bother to look if there was something commercially available. I just threw some CAD together, set up tool paths, and started looking through my metal scrap for some suitable bits. So I came across these pieces of aluminum that a teacher of mine gave to me almost 40 years ago. Leo Fabiano was by far the greatest teacher I have ever had. He taught a class I took in the 80s called Industrial Pattern Making. So this aluminum really brought back some memories. So while the parts are CNCing for the strap bender, I'm going to tell the story of how I got my first real job. So high school was a total waste of my time, and the thought of repeating all that for another four years of college was something I just could not imagine doing. But I was interested in stuff like physics, electronics, art, and when I saw industrial pattern making listed, it sounded interesting. And no, industrial pattern making is not learning how to make dress patterns. It is the process of building up patterns that are then used to make molds for sand casting metal, for injecting molded parts, and other stuff. So anyway, Leo's class had a full machine shop, pattern shop, and foundry for sand casting aluminum, bronze, and brass. Heaven for me, the class was an interesting mix of people. Access to a metal foundry was pretty unique and through the college a pretty low-cost way for artists to make bronze castings. There was also a guy there building a flying saucer with aluminum casting, but he was not very talkative, so I never did find out exactly what he was up to. Leo was a great teacher. I still remember his hearty buongiorno each morning greeting the arriving students. He also had a lot of contacts in industry and would work to arrange interviews for students that had talent. Anyway, for my first semester project, I decided to make patterns and cast parts for a stationary steam engine. When I told Leo, he rolled his eyes and moved on to the next student. But I actually pulled it off. I'll show it running at the end of the video. Seeing that I had some talent, he got me an interview at the Mattel model shop in El Segundo. At the time, the model shop was in the basement and didn't have any windows. So when the head of the shop, Jim, I don't remember his last name, showed me around, I was impressed by everything all right. Lots of machinery, great people, a lot I could learn. But I couldn't imagine myself working in a place with no windows. Crazy, right? After a couple days, Jim called and told me I had the job. He was somewhat appalled when I turned it down, and he told me in a very stern voice, Carly, you are making a huge mistake. Well, I've never regretted that decision for a second. So Leo got me a second interview at a little company in Beverly Hills of all places, Industrial Design Affiliates. They had big, beautiful 4 by 6 foot windows that ran the full length of the model shop. So I started working there. It was my first real job outside of high school. And coincidentally, they did a lot of model making and pattern making for Mattel. I made models for most of the Mattel boy lines during that time and also built up patterns for Hot Wheels cars. The Hot Wheel patterns were built four times size out of solid maple. The wood patterns were then used to make epoxy tooling masters that would then be used to panograph steel molds at the correct size. Quite the involved process and now completely obsolete and replaced by CAD where you can just CNC a mold cavity from the CAD you created. Eliminating all the steps we toiled away at to make molds for the little die cast metal cars. So here's the strap bender. That turned out well. The parts are for an industrial switcher I'm putting together for my backyard railroad. Eventually, it'll look like this. So here's the steam engine I built in Leo's class, running on air at 25 PSI. Two inch bore, three inch stroke, theoretically it's capable of producing about a half a horsepower at 120 PSI, turning 250 RPM. But I like it at this power level just fine. And here are the patterns I made for sand casting the parts in aluminum and bronze. The cylinder, steam chest, and cranks are machine bronze sand castings. The base and flywheels are aluminum sand castings. The flywheels really should be cast iron for weight, but the class blast furnace didn't have the capability of producing that kind of heat. And the amount of bronze, which would have been better than aluminum, was more than I could afford. So aluminum they are. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. See you next time.